Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Andrew Kirikoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're talking about my Week 6 quarterback rankings for the 2020 fantasy football season. On today's episode, we're talking about all things quarterback-related, starting off with matchups at the quarterback position. Which defenses are giving up the most points to opposing quarterbacks in a four-point-per-passing touchdown format? We'll talk about the most advantageous matchups and which matchups you potentially might be avoiding this upcoming week. Then after that, we'll, of course, talk about my top 16 quarterback rankings of the week, getting my thought process, my opinions on which one of these quarterbacks should be having some great weeks here in week six again let me thank you guys for the incredible support not only do we pass 30,000 subscribers we passed it by an extra 200 and 300 subscribers i felt like a lot of you guys out here are holding the button you're like all right i'm gonna be 30,000. i'm waiting for it either way i do appreciate you guys subscribing supporting the channel it really does make a difference um it's been a long time coming that we've um somehow gotten to this stage but we've gotten here consistently with your guys' support. You guys have been on the journey with me. Uh, I'm glad that you guys have been continuously enjoying the content. I, I really do appreciate it. For those of you who haven't subscribed, of course, hit that button. We're on to the next goal of 31K and moving forward. But again, thank you guys again. I appreciate it a lot. Um, outside of that, let's get into matchups at the quarterback position. Make sure you click the like button down below. Leave a comment. And outside of that, we should be good to go. Here it is. All right, so let's start talking about matchups. As you can see on screen, the Atlanta Falcons, of course, are giving up the most points to opposing quarterbacks on a weekly basis in a four-point per passing touchdown format, giving up, I mean, the amount of yards, not even 350 yards to opposing quarterbacks is the thing that I'm worried about. The fact that they're giving up three passing touchdowns to opposing quarterbacks, that is incredible. Kirk Cousins could be in a pretty good situation here. Now, even though the Seattle Seahawks are giving up the second most points, let's remember the Seattle Seahawks. The New Orleans Saints, the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Los Angeles Chargers will all be out with bye week this week. So remember that. Outside of that, of course, those are the three teams that are after the Falcons. The Seahawks, the Chargers, and the Saints. They got to fix their stuff up during the bye week because, my goodness, are they giving up a lot of points. Outside of that, the Buffalo Bills, Patrick Mahomes should be able to take advantage of that matchup. Of course, we saw Ryan Tannehill have himself an incredible game on Tuesday night. A fresh roster. I mean, he almost tore his ACL on that jump getting into the end zone after he was celebrating. But all in all, as long as Tannehill is healthy and ready to go, that's great. The Washington football team playing against Daniel Jones could potentially have himself another good week here. The Jacksonville Jaguars, Matthew Stafford coming off a bye should be great. They've been preparing for that match for a couple weeks now. Should be able to take advantage of that. Of course, the Cleveland Browns against Mr. Ben Roethlisberger. Mr. I'm going to score 20 points a week no matter what. That's what he's been doing thus far this season. Cam Newton should be back, cleared to return against the Denver Broncos in their struggling secondary and then, of course, Minshew against the Lions. Those are the easiest matchups at the quarterback position. Now, when we look at the tougher matchups at the quarterback position, the Colts, of course, have been stout against all I mean, all opposing quarterbacks this year, uh, really putting the pressure on, forcing a lot of turnovers, 1.8 interceptions thrown. A lot of it came from Sam Darnold, I understand. But again, uh, a lot of pressure on the opposing quarterback, making a huge difference there. And it's definitely going to be tough for Joe Burrow in back-to-back -back weeks coming off of that beatdown he took from the Ravens playing against them this week. The Chicago Bears, they'll take on Teddy Bridgewater playing tough against him. Uh, and again, not even on the other side of the ball. The Carolina Panthers have been playing tough against their opposing quarterback. So Nick Foles is going to have to step up to the plate. Tampa Bay will take on Aaron Rodgers. We'll see if they can stop the MVP candidate himself. And then the New York Giants playing pretty well defensively uh, and stopping opposing quarterbacks, whether it is Alex Smith or Kyle Allen, who I expected to be, should be tougher for them. Those are the matchups at the quarterback position going into week six. Now that we've covered that, we can go ahead and we can start today's video by talking about my number one quarterback on the week. It is Patrick Mahomes. Again, let me remind you, the Seattle Seahawks, the New Orleans Saints, the Los Angeles Chargers, and the Las Vegas Raiders are all on bye week this week. So you will see no Russell Wilson. You will see no Derek Carr, Drew Brees, or Justin Herbert, who potentially all could have been on today's list because they've been playing really well over the last couple of weeks. So expect to see them next week, but for now... We will start with Patrick Mahomes as my number one quarterback. This past week, he struggled heavily. And even though he struggled more than I've ever seen Patrick Mahomes struggle, 22 for 43 passing. That's a 50% passing completion percentage or almost. Um, that is the most I've seen him struggle. And to be honest, usually when the Chiefs lose games, it's mainly because the opposing defense has put pressure on Patrick Mahomes. This In this past week against the Las Vegas Raiders, he was sacked three times. The last time that he was sacked... Any number close to that was last year when he played against Indianapolis. He was sacked four times against them, and Indianapolis beat them in the regular season. So again, that's how you beat Patrick Mahomes, but it doesn't matter fantasy-wise. This man, regardless of how he's playing, is still going to produce 340 yards, two passing touchdowns, had himself six rushes for 21 yards, and a touchdown. Patrick Mahomes is a stud, had 30 points last week. 
in a four-point per passing touchdown format. The fact that he's running the ball on the goal line and getting himself more active with his legs is just unlocking more potential for Patrick Mahomes, and it is beautiful to see for fantasy owners. Of course, he's my number one this week, playing against the Buffalo Bills. We just saw the Titans clean their clock. Just imagine what a rage-induced Kansas City Chiefs offense is going to do to them after coming off of a loss. I expect Patrick Mahomes to pop off this upcoming week, have himself a fantastic game. He's my number one. Moving on to number two, we have ourselves Kyler Murray. Of course, Kyler Murray has been fantastic this year. He's not throwing four touchdown passes every single game. That's not his gist. Kyler Murray is getting it done through the air, but is mainly relying upon his ability of moving his legs and running out of the pocket to make himself even that much more successful in fantasy. He had 380 passing yards against the New York Jets this past week. Takes on the Dallas Cowboys. Another one of these easy matchups that absolutely I want to be taking advantage of. Last week, 27 for 37 passing. Again, like I mentioned, 380 passing yards. Only one passing touchdown through an interception. But again, nine rushes for 31 yards and a rushing touchdown. That has just been the consistent key. He is getting nearly 10 points per game on the ground thus far this season. And that in itself, in comparison to quarterbacks that don't have the ability to make plays on the run, like a Tom Brady or a Phillip Rivers or a Ben Roethlisberger, they'd have to throw an extra two and a half touchdowns per game in order to keep up with Kyler Murray's rushing ability and his touchdowns there. So you, that's absolutely beautiful. Regardless, Arizona against that secondary is going to have a field day. I expect Kyler Murray to be a great play. Josh Allen, even though we now know that Josh Allen is human and that he can come off of the, you know, what was it? He had a thousand yards passing in the first three weeks of the season and had incredible performances against him. You know, lackluster defenses to the say the least. He played against a true contender and he got smacked in the mouth and he's going to learn from that because once again, this upcoming week, Monday Night Football, even though this game was supposed to be played tonight, the Tuesday game postponed it. We have ourselves Josh Allen playing against the Kansas City Chiefs and that's a great defense. But here's the thing. Josh Allen did not play well. Still had two passing touchdowns. Turned over the ball twice through the air. Hit 18 fantasy points last week. I think against Kansas City, there is a very good opportunity for Josh Allen to get back on the horse, get himself reestablished. Of course, the running game was non-existent for the Buffalo Bills. If they go ahead and they start, you know, getting more usage and utilization out of a TJ Yeldon or a Zach Moss and a company Devin Singletary, it will help this offense more. They got to be able to run the ball this year. Josh Allen himself is not running the ball. He's not extending plays with his legs. I'm just hoping that against one of these tougher defenses and a tougher secondary, uh, they watch and exactly kind of replicate what the Raiders did because they were extremely successful. And I think Josh Allen, regardless, should be a fantastic play this week. Number four, Aaron Rodgers. Again, Aaron Rodgers, the as of right now, outside of Russell Wilson, this is the MVP candidate because of the fact that he's been so incredible in terms of the passing game. Not only does he get Devontae Adams back this week, the amount of passing touchdowns he's had in the past four weeks, not, of course, he had a bye week this past week, so not including week five, but in the four weeks prior to that, he had four passing touchdowns week one, two passing touchdowns in week two, three in three in week three, and four in week four. I mean, he has been absolutely insane. 13 passing touchdowns in four contests. That's the numbers you want to see, whether it's a six or a four point per passing touchdown format. Those are great numbers. He gets one of the best National Football League wide receivers back into the lineup. I think this offense is humming. They've been preparing for this matchup. They're going to be able to take advantage of that secondary. I mean, if the Chicago Bears can beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I guarantee you Aaron Rodgers is going to have himself a fantastic day this upcoming Sunday. We move on to Lamar Jackson as my number five. And I think I, I mentioned this a little bit during the tight end video today. If you've gone ahead and seen that, if you haven't yet already, go ahead and check that out. Um, it should be on the channel. Subscribe. Thank you. Anyway, um, Lamar Jackson, my number five this week because... In the past three weeks, Lamar Jackson has not thrown for over 200 passing yards. Sure, he's throwing for two touch, the passing touchdowns, turning over the ball, but the fact that he played against Cincinnati last week and had no utilization or influx of points from the rushing game, in which, I mean, if we think about what Lamar Jackson was doing on the ground last year, averaging 80 rushing yards per game, you think to yourself, how is it possible that Lamar Jackson at this moment in time is just completely disappearing? It's just... You know, it's the regression of the offense. They're blowing teams out. They're not requiring Lamar Jackson to have to play all four quarters. And that in itself, and the fact that the Baltimore Ravens defense and offense is so much greater than some of these other teams that they're playing, he's not really being put to the test. I mean, this upcoming week, I'm hoping Philadelphia can really push them to the test and hope that Carson Wentz can, on the other side of the field, play and match up against that defense that is tough, but be able to at least force Lamar Jackson to make more plays. Because again, if he's not... 
then you know I can't consistently 100% enjoy playing a 14-point quarterback. I'm going to have to because he is my quarterback, and I love Lamar Jackson regardless. I'm going to play him. But, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping that it turns around this week against Philadelphia because, again, their secondary is not the greatest. Marquise Brown, Mark Andrews, they got to take advantage of it. Deshaun Watson is my number six. Again, another one of these mobile quarterbacks able to make leg, uh, plays with their legs. Again, uh, even though a guy like Deshaun Watson isn't going to make plays like a Kyler Murray, he still has the ability with, you know, two rushes and 25 yards. I'll take those points any day of the week. He played against Jacksonville this past week, 25 for 35 passing for 359 passing yards, three passing touchdowns. Unfortunately, through two interceptions, but that's Deshaun Watson. When he has to come back in games, he is going to throw turnovers. That's okay. It's like what Andrew Luck used to do back in 2017, 2016. He'd come out in the first half, throw a couple picks, feel comfortable, then he'd clean it up. Either way, this upcoming week, they take on Tennessee. It should be a tougher matchup. Tennessee's defense looked good, but Deshaun Watson plays against them twice a year, every year. He's comfortable with their defense, what their schemes are, what they throw at him. He should be able to at least, now that we've got a pretty good number two wide receiver with Brandon Cooks getting a little bit more momentum. Will Fuller's been great all year. Darren Fells, we got a little bit of a resurgence of him. The running game's looking good. I think Deshaun Watson this upcoming week should be a great play. He's my number six in a pretty decent matchup. Uh, even though Tennessee looks great, I, I think Deshaun Watson is going to bring them back down to earth. Number seven is Ben Roethlisberger. Again, I've mentioned this before. He scores 20 points every week. You want a 21-point quarterback? Go pick him up. This past week, 21.36 fantasy points, three passing touchdowns, 239 passing yards, 27 for 34 passing. Can he get any better? Ben Roethlisberger is back. This is the Ben Roethlisberger of the 2018 season, the guy that was a top three fantasy quarterback. Sure, he's not having these insane games yet, but let the momentum continue to build. They haven't really had an offseason. In this upcoming week, playing against a division rival, a team that is 4-1 in the Cleveland Browns, a struggling secondary that they've had all season long. Ben Roethlisberger has been asking and chopping at the bit for this competition, and I expect him to take advantage of it. I'm excited about the matchup. I'm excited about the potential of Ben Roethlisberger. I think the stat that I heard the other day was uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers are 4-0 for the first time since 1979. Uh, this is a different team. They are just firing on all cylinders. They're getting even more guys acclimated in the offense. The fact that Chase Claypool is only just breaking out in week five. I'm excited about this offense. He's got a lot of weapons around him. He's got a fantastic offensive line. A lot of running backs that they can use on a weekly basis that they just choose not to. And they've, of course, got a great defense. Ben Roethlisberger is a great player. Cam Newton, again, he's been cleared to play and he's been practicing. So that is, that's a great sign. You play against the Denver Broncos this week. Uh, I'm surprised he's back as soon as he has been, but I'm going to take it. Cam Newton, again, let's not forget how valuable he was in fantasy prior to you know being put on the COVID-19 IR list. Um, he was the number seven quarterback from weeks one through three. In those three contests, he was averaging 50 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown every game. That's 11, or sorry, yeah, that's 11 fantasy points regardless of your scoring format because quarterbacks when they rush for a touchdown it's six points 11 extra fantasy points on top of what he does through the air and when you're playing against a secondary with as many injuries as Denver has had this season I think Cam Newton has the uh, you know total upside of potentially making himself a fantastic play this week earlier this week when I talked about the receiving options and the running options of the Patriots I didn't really know that Cam Newton was coming off IR I thought he was still going to be on the list because it was a three-week basis but he's ready to come back therefore he starts as my number eight quarterback on the week we go ahead and we talk about Matthew Stafford as our number nine again he's been preparing for the Jacksonville Jaguars matchup uh, for the last two weeks been on bye week should be ready to go again Jacksonville does not have a defense they have really lost a lot of their great pieces and it's going to be a struggle for them to keep up with Matthew Stafford. I mean, thus far this season, he's been averaging 250 passing yards and two passing touchdowns every game. I mean, in the weeks that he got Kenny Galladay back, of course, there was an, you know, an increase in total productivity in terms of passing touchdowns and yardage. And that's great to see because as we progress, we're going to see more and more improvements. Uh, but again, Matthew Stafford is continuing to get better and better. And even though the team that surrounds him isn't the best that they could possibly be at this moment in time, I still still think that the Jaguars are going to be struggling. I mean, they don't have that much of a defense, and their offense is very contingent on the fact that if, in fact, Chark doesn't play, Minshew disappears. And if that's going to be the case and LaVisca Chenault's going to be dealing with hamstring injuries, oh, we got a problem there in Jacksonville. And I definitely think that the Detroit Lions are going to be taking advantage of that. That's why Matthew Stafford sits at nine. Number 10 is Ryan Tannehill. Of course, he had an incredible Tuesday night game. I mean, one of the best breakout performances on national TV that everyone could witness and you know really understand how good Ryan Tannehill is. I've been saying this since last year. 
The guy was averaging 21 fantasy points per game last season from week 7 through 17, and he hasn't slowed down. The worst performance he's had has been in the playoffs. Outside of that, it was in week 3 of the 2020 season where he had 11 fantasy points. That in itself is not something you usually see. He is always on a consistently uh, on a consistent basis scoring, and we're going to continue to see that as the weeks progress. Not only did he get it done through the air, 21 of 28 passing, 195 yards, and three passing touchdowns, he had himself four rushes for 42 yards and a touchdown. The extra mobility of quarterbacks continuing to give them value. I think Ryan Tannehill playing against the Houston Texans, an easy matchup. I mean, if we go back and look at what Tannehill did against them last year, I mean, these were these were some really good games for Tannehill. For A.J. Brown, those two connected and had themselves fantastic contests. So again, I expect Tannehill to have himself a pretty good week here in week six. Moving on to Ryan Fitzmagic Fitzpatrick. I mean... You should have expected him to be here. He plays against the New York Jets. He's been absolutely out of his mind in the last couple of weeks. He was the number two quarterback only behind... Uh, oh, sorry. He was the number three quarterback this past week. Only behind Tannehill and Patrick Mahomes. He had himself 27.6 fantasy points in a four-point-per-passing touchdown format. 22 of 28 passing. 350 passing yards and three passing touchdowns with zero turnovers. The New York Jets, you know, they stink. And it's just a fact. And Ryan Fitzpatrick has got a lot of momentum. He's even getting touchdowns on the ground. He is honestly a quarterback that just doesn't give a crap. And he's getting after it every single week. And it's exciting to see. I'm excited about the potential of Fitzpatrick this week. He's an automatic play. He's been great for the last couple of weeks. Uh, and that momentum is going to continue to ride through. We have Tom Brady at number 12. I think Tom Brady's struggles is 100% uh, related to the fact that Chris Godwin has been absent. O.J. Howard has gotten injured. They haven't been able to consistently throw the ball to receivers that he can trust. And sometimes he forgets what down it is when the game is on the line. That being the case, Tom Brady is still a good quarterback in the National Football League. This past week in Chicago, that was a great defense. And I think Green Bay is just as good of a defense down the stretch. But the question is, how much is Godwin going to help? I think it helps significantly. I think that brings an extra potential touchdown every single week because... You not only have to rely upon Mike Evans and him being hobbled, you get to bring back one of the better wide receivers in the National Football League, one of the better fantasy wide receivers that can make plays after the catch in the slot position for Tom Brady. I think this in itself is going to give him a big boost in terms of overall productivity and opportunity in fantasy. We'll leave him at number 12 for this week. Number 13 is Jared Goff. Again, Jared Goff's had himself a couple good games here. Uh, if Jared Goff's going to continue to score three touchdowns every week, he is going to you know, viably be a starting quarterback. 21 for 30 passing, 309 passing yards, two, to uh, sorry, two total passing touchdowns, and had himself a rushing touchdown on the one-yard line. Always sneaks it in and steals it from the Rams running backs. No big deal there. But again, this upcoming week, they take on the San Francisco 49ers. That 49ers defense, they know how to play against the Rams. They've shown it in the past. But the question is, do they have the personnel to go ahead and stop this Rams offense without Bosa putting the pressure on. Of course, they, they traded DeForest Buckner earlier in the season uh, for the rookie uh, draft pick. They have a depleted secondary. And if they're not back and healthy, ready to go, I expect, you know, of course, Jared Goff, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup to take advantage of this matchup. It may be a little bit of a sprinkle of Gerald Everett uh, and to see themselves putting up a lot of points this week. We have ourselves Andy Dalton as my number 14. We talked about him as a waiver wire pickup. He's an immediate pickup in play because we've mentioned this before. Andy Dalton has never had this much talent surrounding him ever in his career. I, I think going into this Dallas Cowboys organization, they look to be a team that obviously is going to lean on the running game and allow Ezekiel Elliott to make his you know mark on the game on a weekly basis. But when in fact defense starts to struggle, we're going to have to see Andy Dalton come out and throw the ball. And he's got some incredible wide receivers around him. Whether it's Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, Cedric Wilson. They will get anybody involved. Dalton Schultz, it doesn't matter. Everybody join the club. Tony Pollard is going to come out and have a game. It doesn't matter. I think the fact that he's surrounded with so much talent, he would really have to make a horrible mistake after mistake to be a terrible fantasy play this week. Because again, even if he's throwing pick sixes, it'll be like Jameis Winston. He comes out and he's going to try to score again. And eventually he's going to. And I expect that's offense. Uh, to be firing on all cylinders and play for Dak Prescott in the future. Either way, we go ahead and move on, and we have ourselves a number 15 quarterback this week. It is Kirk Cousins because, again, he's the easiest matchup at the quarterback position this week. They play against the Atlanta Falcons. This is a defense that has been awful over the last couple of weeks, and they haven't even improved a little bit. Sure, they fired their head coach, their special teams coordinator, their GM. They're cleaning house over there. 
But Kirk Cousins, he still has the ability to, at least on a minimum basis, 250 passing yards and two passing touchdowns. He's going to turn over the ball here and there. But I do expect him to play against this team in Atlanta and have himself a pretty good game. Again, this is one of the easier matchups. You have such a great chemistry with Thielen and eventually building that one with Jefferson. Whether it is Alexander Madison or Dalvin Cook in the backfield, I'm expecting it to be, of course, Madison. Uh, this offense is going to be able to impose their will on this Falcons defense and put up some great points. So we leave Kirk Cousins at number 15. The last option for today. Oh, I hesitate on this one. I hesitate heavily. If you have to start Matt Ryan, you start him. Please tell me that there is another option accordingly on screen that you can go pick up because Matt Ryan has been horrible. He hasn't thrown a passing touchdown in the last two weeks. Uh, he's made, I mean, uh, too many mistakes to say the least and has had very good matchups. Green Bay sure is a tougher team to play against, but again, Calvin Ridley was hurt that game and so was Julio Jones. But the question is this past week, what happens against Carolina? Does the offense completely fall apart? Why are you throwing interceptions in the red zone when you can go ahead and very easily throw the ball away? These are the decision-making processes that really struggle in my mind. And I'm sure Matt Ryan's trying to get back on track and trying to give this team a little bit of a resurgence. But without Julio Jones, it makes it very difficult to trust in Matt Ryan. I have him at 16 because I know he is a good quarterback and he will eventually find himself his footing and, and be able to progress. Um, but for now, try to find somebody better. Of the players I didn't mention, there's a reason why. We'll talk about that later. Sunday morning, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Otherwise, that is it. Those are my week six quarterback rankings on the week. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I really do appreciate it. I still think that Matt Ryan has a very good opportunity of torching this Minnesota defense. I'm just saying that it is a gamble. And if you're willing to take that gamble, then risk it for the biscuit. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for watching. I appreciate you guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not yet already. Click that like button. Outside of that, until tomorrow, Hidden Gems. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.